so for those of us who have been with us in the previous classes, we've we've covered almost every other fundamental basic that that is for anyone who was very fresh in terms of design and PCB design itself. So we talked about capacitors, resistors, transistors, ICs, MCUs, relays, switches, name the chain. And, and of course, and the videos themselves, we are having the updates coming on, on especially on our YouTube channel. So for those of us who were not able to join us, say in the previous classes, you can check out our channel. Just go search Beard Grades. Just subscribe to our channel, check out what we have there and you can follow up and catch up, say if you're very fresh when it comes to this. So particularly today, we want to concentrate more on what we're going to learn in this key card, key card, key card, whatever. So in this key card masterclass, it's key card for me, you can call it key card. So in this key card masterclass, so the prerequisite is very simple that you should just have key card in your computer, in your laptop, in your Mac, in your Linux, on your Windows PC. So you don't have, you, you, you're not required to have any prerequisite knowledge when it comes to using the tool itself. We want you as fresh as you are, and you'll be able, we'll, we'll walk the journey with you to start designing such designs, learn all the concepts, the tools, what are the commands that we need to do, and step-by-step step, all the way to a pro level. What will be in this course? So at the core basics, we're going to get started on setting up the software, learn the different commands, what keys are used to do what, what how can we be quicker using the tool? What are the hot keys? What is, what is the, what's the function of our keyboard in reference to, to the keycard software itself? How can we enhance our speed? So it's the mouse and the keyboard now there. So we are going to learn all the tools there. What are components libraries? We dive into all the now the symbols, say a resistor, a capacitor, and how do we get them from our storage, from our local libraries on keycard? So what are footprints? What are, what's the difference between a footprint and a symbol? What's, what's a netlist, a notation? Once we're done with those, all those again, we will now proceed to PCB layout itself, then do the layouts themselves. How, how is the layout supposed to be done? Where do we place this component? GABA files, these are production files. How do we again generate the GABA files? Bill of materials, and other material. All these will now fall on the basic core, core elements or the core basics when it comes to using the software. So at least once we are done with the core basics, all these features, all this list of things, you should, you should be able to actually achieve and, and actually use them very well. Once we're done with the core basics, we'll then move to the intermediate level of interacting with the software now. And the way the course is designed is not only, we are not only going to like be dealing, be dealing entirely with the, sorry for this, we're not only going to be dealing with the the software itself, as well as the fundamentals, yeah? Like we learn how are multi-layer PCBs, what's the stack up for multi-layer PCBs? If you are talking about four layers, how do we do that? Custom libraries, we find that there are libraries, there are components, there are footprints that are not available in the default keycard setup. So how do we design? How do we get our custom libraries? Where do we get that party libraries? How do we add them? And how do we include them? You know, you know, at this point now, you'll be able, you'll be, you'll have learned all the way how to use all these components. And again, you, you, you started with the BOM and stuff to do with bill of materials. So we'll then move into BOM consolidation. How do we consolidate our BOM so that we can get the best out of our design in terms of cost? This is something that we are also going to check into. BOM consolidation, a very key feature at the intermediate level when we are interacting with the, with the keycard software itself. We're also going to do a deep dive on layout. 
how do we perform layouts in power? What do we consider? What are our grounds? What, what's the power? What are different power lanes? How do we separate different signals? Is this a very important signal? Is this a clock signal? Where are they supposed to be laid? Are we talking about an oscillator? Where do we put it? Yeah. So all these are fundamental things that we'll be covering. At this point, we'll also then move into better schematic organizations. How do we organization our how do we organize our schematics so that we can have a classic touch? Let's have the professional touch such, such that when you open a schematic, yeah, it can be read by read and understood by anyone. We don't have to ask you what were you designing. It's at this stage that we are going to. We're also going to dive into touch pads here. You, 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 may, you may have seen some touch pads. Say when, when you press some buttons, they're just like touch pads and stuff like those. These are some of the advanced concepts again that we'll be dealing with. And I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing here on this point that the course itself, the way it's going to be built and developed, it will not only be a course, but also like a reference point where you can come back, say you've forgotten a certain concept or you are doing your project and you want to do some referencing this will be your material because we, it's very broad. It will take, it will have like, it will be several hours the course itself. And that's the reason so that we can have like a datum, a reference point for us. You we'll also learn how to update components on the fly. Like you have your components on, you have your, your PCB laid out. Maybe you want to update a certain IC. We'll, we'll show you how we do this on the fly on, on the, on the keycard software without actually going back to the schematics and stuff. There is a way we do that in a very pro way. We're also going to discuss about copper pores. These are zone pores and what do they mean? What zone priorities do we have when we are dealing with such pores? What files do we need to export and what files is the software itself capable of exporting? We'll dive deep on all the files that we can export, who needs this file and where we should we should get them and in what format. Centroid files, part of production files, how do we generate them in KiCad? And how do we ensure that they're in the best format so that our fab house do not have lots of questions when we set the files to this? At this point, when we are done with all these elements and many, many more, especially at this, where we'll be building a very strong foundation, we'll be ready now to move into the advanced concepts where now we'll be designing very pro, pro designs. And of course, once you have the very strong foundations, we'll also be, be designing designs here beyond reproach. Once now we get into the advanced concepts, here we'll do now a deep dive on routing itself. And when I say it's a deep dive on, on routing, it's because now we'll be, we, we will now be caring about the types of signals that we are dealing with. What are differential pairs and how do we lay them out? What tools are there for us? with KiCad so that we can interact with differential pairs. How do we do impedance matching? How do we do length matching on KiCad? All these are tools that are at our disposal, but where do we get them from KiCad and how do we make the best use out of them? High-speed signals. How is KiCad well suited to deal with high-speed signals? RF, this we're talking about radio frequency signals here. How do we lay them? What components do we select? What are the practices that have been guided for us to follow? Signal integrity, we are dealing with, say, sensitive boards. What signals affect other signals? What layer stack up do we select? Do we go with eight layer stack up? Do we go with six? What are the best practices when we are doing such layouts and where do we place components in such? File exports, again, we dive deeper on that as well here. What are the fabrication houses limits? And how do we talk to the fab houses? How do we ask them, like, can you do this for us? And what, where do we get these contacts? And how do we get to know the advanced lines and what they can do for us? We'll also dive into BGA, FPGA, and the constraints. How should we route these things? How do we place them? How do we do via in pads? How do we do micro vias? How do we do blind vias? What are they? What's the limits when it comes to annular ring? We'll break down everything here, the advanced concepts. What are the video interfaces at our disposal? What are all the communication protocols that we need to know and they are advanced? Talk of CAN, CANVAS protocol, talk of I2S. How do we deal with 
RS-485, we are talking about Modbus here. How do we do, how do we deal with RS-232 interfaces? EMC, EMI techniques, very advanced concepts here. How do we deal with all this? The course will break down everything here and we'll dive much deeper into this such that you will be having a reference point once we are done with the entire course and you will be coming back. Like I'm emphasizing here, the course itself will be like more like a reference, not, a, not more than just like, not more than, not, not, not just like any other, any other course out there that is to, to just teach you and go. It's a reference that you'll be coming for then looking back to what concepts you learned. What is IPC? What are the standards that are recognized internationally? And how do we deal, how does KiCAD also address that? ESD principles. How do we deal with DFM? This is the design for manufacture. So how can we optimize our design to fit some DFM in regards to a certain fabrication house, in regards to a certain client's needs? HD, HDMI development boards. We are talking of, these are very, very high dense boards. We are talking of high density interact. They have very many layers. So, and how is KiCAD well suited with this? An open, soft, an open source software, yet very powerful. How do we, how do, we do deal with FCC certifications, compliance such as UL? And finally, once we are done with all this, we are going to check about surface finish, such as hustle. Why, why, why would we need HASL? Why and why would we use gold plating? And how do they relate, say, with packages like BGA and FPGA? All these will then will then have done a deep, deep, a deep dive on all these. Then we'll, we'll, we'll do this in a wrap up, say, all project based. And you might be thinking, how again do we learn all these concepts? Yes, they seem to be very many and they will be very good concepts here that they have been tested. We've been working with all these fields. We are lucky to have interacted with almost every other communication protocol we are talking about here. Almost every other tool that's available for us with KiCAD, almost every other tool that's available for us say when we are dealing with our other EDA tools, talk of Altium, talk of Ego and how we are going to encompass all these. And probably how can we import an ego file into KiCAD? How can we import a KiCAD file into Altium? All these concepts and many, many more will be covered in this course. Projects will build together in this particular course. We will start with the basics and the fundamentals of power supplies. We'll deal into SMPS, we'll check on LDOs will check the advantages and disadvantages of each. When do we use ether and which one is more likely to be used for specific applications? Say, why do I need to use an LDO? Yes, it's very poor, but why do I use it, say, for RF signals and not use an SMPS, which is very stable? All these concepts will be broken down as we do the implementations. Like, because the course itself would be very practical and getting all the all the industrial and the manufacturing tips into it to make it a very rich and a very reference course. AC and DC conversions. How do we do the AC to DC conversions? And again, how do we regulate the DC itself to different power lines that we want to use? We'll dive into MCUs. Concepts such as several ports that are available for us. We'll deal with STM. We'll deal with how to use tools like STM cube. How do we identify such pins? and how do we know which pin to use? We will then check on concepts such as sensor readings. How do we do sensor readings on certain, certain MCUs? Say, what are, the, what are the bits? What are the calibrations? And how do we calibrate this so that we can get the best out of these sensors? Home automation projects. We will do these projects. You'll find these projects being very fun because these are projects that you can apply in your own house. These are projects that you can apply in your own room, in your own, in your, in your hostel, in whatever room you are living in. So you can be knowing when someone is at your door. You, you can be switching on lights and off. You, you can, we will dive into this home automation pins and entirely something to do with IoT there. We will, 
You'll also replicate boards such as the Arduino Mega or Arduino Uno so that, so that you can also have the knowledge of how is this thing done. And surely I can design my own after all this course itself. We'll then go to advanced concepts such as RF, audio. We'll go to even more disruptive technologies, say talk of augmented reality. How do I select FPGAs for that? How do I select BGA packages that deals with camera? How do I select audio and stuff like those? How to get the most out of the course? How do I get the most? Because as you've seen, the course will be very broad and it will be very rich in terms of resources. And so you may ask yourself, how do you get the best out of this? Watch the videos at your own pace. Yes, we'll be having these live sessions. We'll also be having those recorded sessions as well as the videos that we are doing here in these live sessions, they will be recorded. So you will have time to rewatch them. And they will be in very small bits such that you can rewatch a concept, repeat the concept once again. If you don't understand the concept, repetition is key here. Design along with the designer when he's designing certain concepts. Fast watch, but then do again and design as he is designing so that you can get used to all the commands that are available in KiCad. Practice and practice, practice. Repetition is key here. Ask questions on the chat section. On our platform, we do have the chat section. Say, say you, have, you have ran into an issue and you, cannot, you, you, you don't know how to approach that issue. Maybe Google is not helping you. Use the chat forum. Ask these questions and I'll be checking there. There will be other students that are good that, that, that have already covered that and they will be able to join together with you. And what kind of designs can I make out of using KiCad? We'll be designing such boards here. This is an agricultural based board. It used, it used ESP32. It has pH sensor, soil moisture sensor. It has a camera. It has an audio amplifier. It has temperature sensor, humidity sensor. Talk of all like it has like seven interfaces for different sensors to deal with them. So we'll break down on how to do this. It also interacts with the AC to DC conversion and DC to DC regulation. Storage, this is local storage using SD card. How do we do such interfacing? And moving forward also, how do we do programming on such modules that have been used here in this particular board? As, as a beginner for us, we will do concepts to do with power supplies. And this is like a basic back boost converter. We'll be dealing with this as one of the entry point to the project. You can see this is a back boost that was designed here in the lab, tested, functioning as it's as expected. It boosts 3.7V to 5V available to charge your phones. So these are some of the designs, some of the PCBs will design. We will design and you will get them back onto your hand, test them, perform all the electrical tests, if possible, sell your boards if, if you have an idea and stuff like those. Concepts that you will see designing board on KiCad here and materializing your clients, sending you images that they are happy with your project and stuff like those. So this is a design, especially this is from KiCad itself. And you can see the concept itself materializing here and the product itself is functioning. And here we are dealing with lots of connectors to drive motors here. We have the module itself. We're also going to dive on how to use modules, how to embed chips on the boards, how to use SOC modules. These are system on chips, SOM system on module chips, like one of these, this is an example of SOM here. We also deal on how we can integrate different modules. As you can see, we have this one here, another module here. We also have another module here that's embedded still on this board. So these are concepts that we'll break down and dive into as well. We learn how also to design such, such models. How do we deal with custom board shapes, outline, outline, outline of the board, a board that is not say square, rectangular or circular. How do we develop and how do we deal with graphical images in KiCad? And how do we get finally such boards produced? And how do you get happy results when you are working with KiCad and also 
basically and the, entirely the principles of design themselves. More on, more on showcase, showcasing on the designs themselves that have been done. How do you do, how do you perform such layouts? How do you get compact boards? And how are you finally going to be happy with all the products that you've done? And finally, again, we'll deal more and dive more into IoT itself. So, and especially you will see like here, we're having two RF modules here, we're having LoRa. We'll dive deep and break down LoRa, one of the most interesting RF system. Personally, I do like LoRa so much. So I've, I've developed lots of projects on LoRa and how do you set this, how do we set data packets? How do we send payloads over long distances? And how, how can such payloads be received? And how can we set any data, say even in agricultural applications, all these concepts together with many more will be found in this course. Back to PCAD itself.